Hello, Mike Oppelman, lowlife.com. This is some video we took with Chuck Olson of Minnesota Stories, also blogumentary. This is PZ Myers of, how do you say that again? Oh, this is good. Somebody <laughs> will finally hear how to pronounce it. It's, you can either pronounce it pharyngula or pharyngula. Either way works. And do you want to give us a brief description of what that means? <laughs> and uh, why sure. you chose it for you the name of your blog? Uh, it's, it's the name of a particular stage in development. Uh, so it's the stage that's also called the phylotypic stage, and it's where the embryo has first formed uh, most of its major organs. Hox genes are turned on. It has these structures called pharyngeal arches. Um, it's just a really cool stage in development. It's the stage of development I'm most interested in my work. So, gotcha. is there some metaphor in terms of your self-publishing there? Uh, any metaphor would be really strange. No, it's it's not. Really. It's just I'm a developmental biologist, so I tried to think of something developmental, developmentally rele relevant, and put that on there. So you're a biologist. Um, what is life? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, big philosophical question. Um, what is life? Well, uh, there's a lot of definitions out there. Uh, you know, just a simple informal de definition would be life is a self-sustaining metabolic process that's capable of replicating itself. How's that for a simple answer? That's at least one I'd throw out there. So, do you think it would be possible, you know, whether it's a thousand years from now or not, to create life in the lab? Oh, I think it's going to happen in much less than a thousand years. It's going to, you know, maybe within the next decade, maybe within the next century, it's going to happen. So we could make a spider in the lab, given enough time. Well, first step, make a cell. <laughs> um, and there are people working on that, that very project. Uh, there are people who are doing things like starting from the sequence of some simple bacteria, and they're, you know, in, in principle, there should be no problem with this. You take, the, you take that sequence and you synthesize it in the machine, and you combine it with the appropriate vesicles, and maybe it'll work. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so you're an atheist, mm -hmm. and your your you can be hard on religious people, as can the commenters on your blog. I mean, yes. there's a very anti-religious sort of theme uh -huh. at times. Do you think? Our, I mean, I think I know how you can answer this, but are religious people all stupid? No, not at all. <laughs> uh, I, I think most religious people are perfectly normal, ordinary people. It's not like we're even selecting for the particularly most stupid bunch to indoctrinate <laughs> with this. It's, it's a cultural, social, traditional sorts of thing that gets people into that. And you know, I, I think what happens is that there are all these wonderful feedback mechanisms that reinforce the ideas of religion. You know, you take a little kid and you tie religion to Christmas morning and presence under the tree, he's going to have warm fuzzy feelings about religion for all of his life, you know. So I like Christmas, so <laughs> there, there we go. You know. uh, and it's, it's little things like that that lead to it. And it, it also insists that people stop thinking critically about itself. And that's the real problem, I think, is it, it's, it's warm and fuzzy and harmless except for the fact that it indoctrinates people in just accepting things on this mythical thing called faith and that leads to all kinds of really bad decisions. Not all re religious decisions are bad, but that, that lack of you know perspective on things is what, what screws them up, I think. What's wrong with having the Ten Commandments on the wall at the courthouse? Have you read the Ten Commandments? <laughs> they're ridiculous. I mean, they're, uh, they're, there's some of them that are just common sense, like don't kill people, don't steal from people. There, and there's all these other silly ones about, you know, no graven images or whatever, no other god before me, etc., that just don't matter. And in fact, contradict the principles of a plural, pluralistic society like we've got, because it's violating the right of other people to believe in other gods. So, yeah, I'm dead set against them. I kind of like George Carlin's comedy routine about it. Have you heard that? Where, oh, 
George Carlin goes through and dissects the Ten Commandments. And he gets them down to, I think, three. <laughs> and so most of the rest, he says, that, you know, the reason we have Ten Commandments, it was a marketing decision. Because <laughs> ten sounds nice and round and official. And so no, I'm <laughs> totally against it. They're, they're, they're just too ridiculous. Atheists are asked this all the time. Where does morality come from <laughs> if it's not from some god or a fear of the afterlife or... or? Uh, well, you know, the, the answer I give is, is kind of biological. I think where, the, where morality comes from in human beings is from a sense of empathy. That we have structures in our brain that are specifically evolved to model human behavior, to observe, model what we observe in other people. And from that comes a sense of what the other is feeling. And that empathy, I think, is the ultimate source of morality. It, you know, it's the golden rule. You do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And we do that because we can see you know, that if I reach over and punched you in the face, you'd feel bad, and I would feel bad, and the interview would be really messed up, and... And they might punch you back. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where, that's, that's where morality comes from. I'm much more troubled by these people who think that morality comes from some threat from a supreme being because of that sort of thing. These are people who do not have that empathy, who can't generate those feelings on their own and rely on some kind of cosmic bully to keep them in line. They're the ones who you know, talk about atheism as if, well, if you don't believe in God, you'll run around raping people and murdering people and robbing stores. What's, what's holding them back? Because <laughs> I never feel any desire to do any of that stuff. 